all of our children in the house of the Lord this morning, visiting with us, worshiping with us. Today, all of our kiddos are making their way at this time. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let all the church say, praise the Lord. Amen. Take your Bibles now and turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Luke. The book of Luke chapter number 8 this morning. The book of Luke chapter number 8 today. Praise the Lord. Let me ask you something. Are you a good listener? If I asked your spouse this morning, hey, is she a good listener? Is he a good listener? What would be your spouse's reaction this morning if I just asked him, is he a good listener? Is she a good listener? I see elbows flying in this building right now in the name of the Lord. What kind of listener are you? Since you think about four times faster than any person usually talks, do you use this time to think about other things while you're keeping track of the conversation you're having right then? Do you listen primarily to facts rather than ideas when somebody's speaking to you? Let me ask you another question. Do you avoid listening to things that you feel will be too difficult to understand? Can you tell from a person's appearance, and don't answer this one, okay, but can you tell from a person's appearance and delivery that there won't be anything worthwhile said whenever they talk to you? When someone's talking to you, do you appear to be paying attention when really you're not paying attention? Do certain words and phrases prejudice you from listening and objectively to someone's conversation when they're trying to talk to you? When you're listening, are you distracted by outside sights and sounds? How are you at listening? Are you a good listener? Stand with me this morning. Let's read one verse of Scripture from Luke chapter number 8 as we talk about learning to hear from the very voice of God. How many of you would say, Preacher, one of the most important things we need to know in the body of Christ right now is whatever God is saying? How many of you would agree with me in that this morning? I believe that's one of the most important things that we need to be hewning in on and listening into is what is God saying in this time and in this season. Luke chapter number 8, and look at verse number 8, just one scripture this morning. The Bible says, And other fell on good ground other fell on good ground and it sprang up and it bare fruit an hundredfold and when he had said these things he cried he that hath ears to hear let him hear bow your heads with me this morning as we talk about learning to hear the very voice of God learning to hear the voice of God this morning father I love you today I thank you Lord that you have given me this privilege Lord to stand behind this sacred desk, Lord, now these four years. I pray, God, that, Lord, as I stand behind this desk this morning, that, God, your anointing will fall fresh and pure and holy upon me from the top of my head to the very soles of my feet, that, God, the power of the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the glory of the Lord will flow out of my mouth like the waters cover the sea, Lord. And, God, like a great ocean, let the waves of your love and of your word pour over this people, Lord, until everyone is full of the word of God and fed, Lord, from the fruit and from the nuggets of your word and the grain of your word this morning. God, I pray that you'd move me out of the way, that Jesus himself would step forward now, that you'd give me the words to speak, to say unto this people what thus saith the Lord would have me to say. And I give you praise and give you the glory in Jesus' name. And all God's children said amen and amen. You can be seated this morning. I want to keep you in Luke chapter number 8 as we begin a brand new series today. How many of you believe that you can still hear from God? Amen. How many of you believe we can still hear from God? How many of you heard from the Lord this week already? Amen. Heard something from the Lord. We hear from the Lord in His Word. We hear from the Lord in His preachers, His prophets, His ministers, and His saints. We hear from the Lord through the impressions of the Holy Spirit. But I just want to hune in today on one simple way to hear from the Lord, and that is the greatest way to hear from the Lord, and that's simply the Word of God itself. Can I tell you... This word is a living document. 
Amen? It's a living document. It is not something that is just written in black and white and survived all of these years just because man made it survive. I believe the Spirit of God is what made this Word survive. Amen? I believe the Spirit of God still inspires this Word to speak to your heart. Don't you? I, I believe that with all of my heart this morning. And I want to talk to you in context of that in this little story. If you've got your notes this morning, I just want to say these simple words to you. And that is, God wants to talk to you. God wants to talk to you. You say, Pastor, God wants to talk to me. God wants to speak to every single person in this room. Why? Because every person in this room is in different situations of life right now. And how many of you know we need his counsel in every situation of life that we face? Amen. In every place of life that we face this morning, we need the counsel and the help of the Lord. This little story talks out about how Jesus is talking here and he gathers a great group of people together long about verse number 4, verse number 5 and your Bible says that when this group of people were gathered together Jesus began to tell a story and he said that a sower went out into a field to sow that this sower went out and this sower in reckless abandonment began to sow seed everywhere in his field some of it fell along the path some of it fell in the thorns some of it fell along the rocks in the past how many of you know if you've ever gardened in the state of missouri there's rocks anywhere in that garden amen it almost seems like the garden is the path itself amen praise the lord but corn will grow in rocks somebody showed me that hallelujah amen if you put enough water on it and in restless abandonment he just begins to throw this seed out it goes along the path it goes along the thorns and some of it goes in the trees some of it goes out into the fertile ground and it seems like this guy doesn't really care about how much seed he's putting about he just is just throwing it out there can I say to you church family Sunday after Sunday day after day week after week the Lord in reckless abandonment is throwing out seed out into his field because he wants something to come up hallelujah he desires for something to come up and the life church family is not in the water that hits the soil the life church family is not in the fertilization of the soil the life church family is in the death of the seed and the resurrection of that seed up through the ground the water just makes it grow the fertile soil makes it grow but the life is in the seed of the word all by itself and the seed of the word can go out church family and whenever it goes inside a fertile human heart and death takes place meaning what pastor death to yourself then the life of God can begin to spring up out of your life and you longer you no longer live your life unto yourself but you live your life unto the fullness of the Word of God all by itself. And so in this little story, he starts telling us this story about the farmer and the seed and the soil. And let's break this down this morning. If you're taking notes, here's what it is this morning. The farmer is simply this. The farmer is God. The farmer is God. The seed is His Word. The soil is my mind. God is the farmer. The seed is the Word of God. The soil is is my mind. Can I tell you that in this room this morning, we have all different types of mindsets in this room right now. We have people that just a few moments ago when I was asking you those questions, some of you were looking at your bulletin. When I was asking those questions, some of you were thinking about what restaurant you're going to go to today instead of hearing the Word of God. Come on somebody, can we be honest in this room this morning? While I was asking those questions today, some of you were thinking about your hair color. Some of you were thinking about your jewelry. Amen. Some of you were thinking uh, about what pretty outfit that you may have had on this morning. Everybody in this room has a different mind Mindset. We have a mindset, but what's happening is we are the collective field of the Lord. And right now, in this very moment, while I'm preaching from this pulpit today, God, in reckless abandonment, is sending out the word of the Lord, looking for a fertile place that he can conceive something through the death of a seed and the life flowing out of that seed in his word contacted by faith. Hallelujah. 
It's faith in God. The farmer is God. The seed is the word and the soil is my mind. How does God speak to me this morning? Look with me in your Bibles in Luke chapter 8 verses 4 through 15. I just want to read little excerpts uh, from this story today. And I want to match it to, uh, to a latter part of the chapter as Jesus is explaining what's going on. In verse 4, the Bible says, And when much people were gathered together, and they were come out of every place and every city, he spake a parable unto them. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down. The fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it, and it choked it. And other fell on good ground, and it sprang up, and it bare a hundredfold in fruit. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that that hears, let him hear this morning. What is God? What is God when he speaks to us and talks to us? Church family, God simply wants to speak to you through his word this morning but there has to be an environment that you prepare in order for the word of God to get in your mind and in your heart this morning first thing I want to talk to you about this environment how many of you would say pastor I want the Lord to speak to me how many of you just be honest say pastor I would like for the Lord to speak to me I, I, pastor has God ever spoken to you in an audible voice two times two times I've heard the audible voice of the Lord what did it feel like it shook me straight to my feet <laughs> just shook the fool out of me scared me half to death I could care if he'd ever say that ever to me ever again I'd just like for him to talk to me out of his word and the impressions of the Holy Spirit because that audible voice thing will scare the fool out of you amen if you if you have ever heard the audible voice of God you will totally agree with what I'm saying if it didn't scare you it was a familiar spirit it wasn't God hallelujah it will flat out out, scare you straight to your straight to your toes why because you know you're unworthy to hear it you got you're unclean amen and you got to get before God and repent and, and scared to death that you get struck dead whenever you hear the audible voice of God but God speaks through his word and there's got to be an environment by which you hear the Lord speak first thing in this environment is this first thing I want to talk to you about is cultivate an open mind cultivate an open mind meaning what pastor be receptive be teachable. Be teachable. There are a lot of people that are in the body of Christ today that do not have a teachable spirit. They're illegitimate sons and daughters of God because they will not allow a spiritual father to come into their life and they become illegitimate children and they fall by the wayside because they did not cultivate an open mind. They weren't receptive to the Word of God. I can tell you something, church family. I can get a Word of God, amen, from anybody. I don't care if they're buck tooth and hairy and black all over. If they're anointed and the Word of God's coming out of their mouth, I'm receiving something, amen. I'm going to get it. Why? Because it doesn't matter what the vessel looks like. It matters that the Word of God's going forth in the anointing, amen. So you've got to cultivate an open mind. The Bible says in verse 5, A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. What does this mean? Verse 12 tells us the meaning of the verse. Verse 12 says, And those that were by the wayside are they that hear, and then cometh the devil, and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Meaning that right now, in reckless abandonment, while I'm preaching the word of God and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, there are some folks that are in this room, the enemy has already entered in by whatever way and means necessary that he can enter in through a tired body, through a sick body, through a sick spirit this morning. And comes in to try to rob and steal the word of God from you. Church family don't ever let anything distract you from receiving from the word whenever you're in the sanctuary. Don't let it distract you. Don't let a person getting up going to the bathroom. Don't let a kid running their way to children's church. Don't let a mom and a dad having a tough morning on a Sunday morning together in a pew distract you from getting from the word of God today because the most important reason you're here is to receive from the word. That's why you're here. Cultivate an open mind. What is the closed mind this morning? What is it? It is the hardened path. The hardened path is a closed mind. It is a closed mind. This is where people harden up to the word of the Lord. This is what word is when it goes by the wayside, is it goes toward the hardened path. The hardened path is a closed mind 
mind. Let me give you three causes for the hardened path this morning. The first cause, the reason people harden up to the Word of God and become the hardened path to the Word of God, not receptive to it. The first cause is fear. Fear will cause your spirit to harden up, not to receive from the Word of God. When you're fearful in your heart, amen, you become unreceptive to the Word of God, to the Spirit of God. The second thing is pride. Pride will cause the path to become hardened in your spirit. When you lift yourself up in pride towards the things of God and the voice of God, amen, the hardened path crusts over top of you and over your spirit where you cannot receive from the Word of God. You might want to write a little second note here, and that is beside pride, pride is simply a smoke screen for insecurity. Pride is simply a smoke screen for insecurity. Third cause of the hardened path in someone's life is this, bitterness. Bitterness will cause you to harden up, not to be able to receive from the Word of God this morning. Uh, Pastor, what is, the, what is the antidote to the hardened path? Most of the time, whenever God wants to get the Word into someone that's hardened up to the things of the Spirit, God has to send a strong storm in order for the hardened path to become soft and pliable where the seed of God's Word can get into someone's life. Oftentimes, tillage won't take place. Oftentimes, putting the plow and the furrow of the plow into the hardened path will not break the hardened path up enough in order for someone to receive from the Word of God. Sometimes, it takes a very strong storm in order for the hardened path. How many of you ever had a garden before? Amen? You know what I mean about in the garden. In the garden, there are roads in the garden. The path, the path, church family, are the rows that are in the garden. God meant for seed to spring up everywhere. He's meant for spring to spring up everywhere, not just in the rows. We plant in rows because we like everything in decency and order and pretty and wonderful and in beautiful. But in God's garden, something's growing everywhere. There's no hardened places in God's garden. Hallelujah. There's no hardened paths. There's no rows in God's garden. God's garden are not straight rows. Straight rows. God's garden is a forest and a plethora of beautiful lush greenery in God's garden. And so you have to cultivate that open mind. Let me just say one more thing before we go on in this lesson this morning. And that is this. Every Christian in this room needs to write this down right here. And that is this. Life of a Christian, the life of every Christian in this room. If you want to live saved and stay saved in your mind and keep your mind open and cultivated to the things of God, write this down. Life is lived on promise, not on explanation. Life is lived on promise, not on explanation. Why, Pastor, is life not lived on explanation? Because if you had the explanation to everything that you were going through in your life, you wouldn't need faith. Did you hear what I said this morning? Life is lived on promise, not on explanation. I can't explain to you why it happened the way it happened. I cannot explain to you why it got took from you. I can't explain to you why you lost a job. I cannot explain to you why this person died and why this person lived. I can't explain to you this morning why this person got healed and why this person still seems to suffer in their body. But I can tell you that as a Christian, I don't have all the explanations but I do have all the promises of God and all the promises of God are yes and amen in him whether you believe it or not hallelujah I have a promise I have a promise that says if I trust in him and believe in him he will direct my past I have a promise that says his word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path I have a promise this morning that says he was wounded for my transgressions he was bruised for my iniquities and by his stripes I am healed this morning I have a promise from God that says he will endue me with power from on high and I can be a witness I can lay my hands on the sick and they shall recover I can speak to devils and they got to move out of the way I can say unto this mountain be thou removed and be cast into the sea I don't have all the explanations but I do have a promise from God say pastor you were teaching a minute ago yeah now I'm preaching hallelujah Ooh, and I'm out of breath I got to go back to teaching ready number two number two you're going to hear from the voice of God. You need to allocate time to listen. You need to allocate time to listen. Meaning what, Pastor? Get still. Get still in the presence of God. 
Turn the TV off. Turn your phone off. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. I got into an addiction right there. Turn your phone off. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I'm convinced now that from the bottomless pit, you know all them crazy things that come up from by them 200,000 demons, that's, that's Facebook and phone demons. Amen. Amen. That ain't alcohol and cigarette demons. That's phone demons. Glory to God. They got wings and stingers on them. Glory. Hallelujah. Y'all go home and read that. Amen. You need to allocate time to listen this morning. You need to get still in the presence of God. Luke chapter 8 verse 6 says, And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. Time in the presence of God is moisture for the seed of God's Word to get in your spirit. Time in the presence of God, church family, is the moisture that God takes place when God reigns in His love. That's why He says you are washed by the water of the Word this morning. Meaning this, that when you get still in God's presence, hallelujah, this is when God can convict, this is when God can deal with issues, and the rocks can get moved out of the way, and the seed of God's Word can stay there, and the correct amount of moisture can come, and that seed can die in the womb of your spirit and spring up to life everlasting before God this morning. Luke chapter 8 verse 13 gives the explanation. He says, they that were on the rock are they which when they heard, they received the word with joy. We've got that happening around here all the time. We've got people that they love my teaching. We've got people they love preaching. They receive it with joy. Man, that was good, Pastor. That was awesome. Amen. Pastor, that was the most awesome word I've ever heard in my entire life. Amen. And I want the CD to that. And that's good. And that was awesome. And it was great. You ask them six months from the time they heard that word, and they can't tell you a thing what I said in the sermon. Why? It was on the rock. It sprung up. It was full of joy. Amen. But it didn't get down in there. It didn't last down in there. Church family, there have been some words that I've heard from preachers years ago that have still stuck. Amen. There's been some things that I've heard ministers say that I've said, oh dear Lord, that's going to that's gonna hang on right there. Amen. That got that, It didn't get in my mind just to stay in my mind for an hour and then leave after the service went. No honey, it went in my mind, down in my heart, all the way down to the very tippy toe of my spirit and I said I receive that right now in the name of Jesus this is where the word should come in our life yes there are times when we feast on the fodder of the word and we're like sheep standing in front of the fodder and we chew on the word and we digest the word but there are other times amen when God gives you the sweet feed of the word and that what's, that's what gives you fat back in your spirit honey amen when you get a little feed from God a little sweet feed from the word and it gets down inside of your spirit and and it stays there. Hallelujah. What is the shallow soil? What's the rocky soil, Pastor? Here's what the shallow soil is. Luke chapter 8, verse 13. They that are on the rock which hear and then receive the word with joy, they have no root. Which for a while they believe, but in the time of temptation they fall away. How many times, church family, have we seen people come into Victory Family Worship Center, receive the word with joy, be touched, be ministered to in an altar, but because they have no root, they don't stick and stay. One of the best ways to form roots in the body of Christ is not just with the foundation of the word, but look at your friend, look at your neighbor this morning and say, best friends, best friends, best friends. We need more best friends in Victory Family Worship Center and more people will stay. Did you hear what I said? We need more best friends in Victory Family Worship Center and more people will stay. Why, Pastor? Because 70% of all people that stay, stay because they had a best friend in the church. That's why they stay. They don't stay because of the worship. It's good. They don't stay because of the preaching. It's good. They stay because they formed a relationship with a best friend. It's just a fact. So what's the shallow soul, Pastor? Here's the shallow soul. It's the superficial mind. It's the superficial mind. The hardened path is the closed mind. The, the rocky the rocky soil is the superficial mind. It's the shallow soil. What does it mean? It means there was no depth there. They were thrilled, but they weren't transformed. 
Let me say that again. They were thrilled, but they weren't transformed. The Word is not here to just thrill you. The Word is here to transform you. And it's not in the delivery of the Word that transforms you. It's in the reception of the Word that transforms you. I could be standing up here like Charles Spurgeon and like the Apostle Paul this morning, speaking to you in a monotone voice, and God's Word all by itself is anointed. And if there was a receptive heart in the room, that receptive receptive heart can receive from the word even from a monotone voice and you can be changed amen it's not in the style of the delivery I'm not anointed because I'm up here bucking and shouting I'm anointed because I live a holy life and I live it according to the word and I can deliver the word to you because I'm walking with him not in my style not in my form, not in the way I allocate the word from my lips, but in bringing the word to you from a transformed life. This is the shallow soul. Is people are thrilled, but they're not transformed. It's the superficial mind. Third thing I want to say to you about hearing from the voice of God is eliminate the distractions. Eliminate the distractions. Another verse says in verse 7, And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprang up. Meaning this, it was tilled soil, but there was thorn seed where it was tilled. You understand what I'm saying? I'm saying it was plowed up, the furrow was made, the rocks were taken out of the way, but the seeds of the weeds were still in the soil. Oftentimes, church family, we don't see the seeds in the weed and, and, and the seeds of the weeds in the freshly plowed soil. But once the water hits it, church family, especially in older ground, dormant seeds that have been there for years in weeds will come up and spring up thorns wherever you had freshly plowed ground. It will come up around you. When I planted my corn, some weird thorn thing came up out of the ground right beside my corn. It had thorns on it. I mean, Lord have mercy. <laughs> Hallelujah, amen. You touch that thing and it would prick you, amen, and you had to pull that up and pull it out of the way. This other weird-looking weed came up. It looked like fescue, but it had a big head on it and snarling teeth, and it looked at me and said, I'm going to choke out anything you... I had to spray it and was killing corn while I was spraying it. It was just scary. Some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it, and it choked it out. Luke chapter 8, verse 14 gives us the explanation, the very next verse, and it says, And that which fell among the thorns are they, which when they have heard, they go forth, meaning that it springs up in them, it does take root, but, and are choked with the cares and the riches and the pleasures of this life, and brings no fruit to perfection. Meaning what, Pastor? It grows up with the thorn. It looks like a plant. It has all of the anatomy of a plant, but there's no fruit there. And I tell you, church family, in the body of Christ today, we've got a few hardened paths. We have a few people that are shallow soil, but we've got more thorn bushes growing up with wheat than we've ever had in the body of Christ before. And what we've got is a beautiful green plant, but we don't have any fruit on it. We don't have any fruit on it. Meaning what, Pastor? Meaning we've got a good-looking church, but where are the unsaved souls that need to be brought in? we got a nice, pretty, clean plant. We've got lots of moisture here. We've got lots of moves of the Holy Spirit here, but where are the people getting redeemed and saved and set free in our altars? It's because of the weeds that are growing up around the spirit of our saints. Too many saints are too busy to go witness they're too busy they're busy with the cares of this life they're busy with the riches of this life they're preoccupied with things of this life and we've got a pretty plant but we don't have no fruit hallelujah what is the soul with weeds pastor here's what it is it's the preoccupied mind it's the preoccupied mind we've got a plant but it's preoccupied with something else other than bearing fruit let me give you three types of weeds here this morning first type of weed is this it's worries it's worries. Worries will cause you to have a beautiful green plant but no fruit on them. Riches, number two, is another way to have a beautiful green plant but no fruit on it. Meaning that because of worries, your mind is preoccupied on things other than the mind of God. Because of riches, our mind is preoccupied on other things than the things of God. It's not that God doesn't want you to be blessed and to have wealth. It's just when God blesses you with the wealth, He wants you to take it and use it to advance His kingdom. Hallelujah third thing that causes the preoccupied mind is pleasures this is a weed pleasures are weeds riches are weeds 
worries are weeds in the mind. This is the soul with the weeds in it. And some fell among thorns, and when they heard, go forth, choked with cares, riches, pleasures of this life, and brings no fruit unto perfection. We've got a plan, but we don't have any fruit. I want you to just lay your Bible down just for a moment. I want you to say these words out loud with me. I'm not here to make a living. I'm here to make an impact. Say it like you mean it. I'm not here to make a living. I'm here to make an impact. You still haven't convinced me. I want you to say it this morning like you really understand what I'm trying to say to this morning. I'm not here to make a living. I'm here to make an impact. I felt some thorns and some weeds get pulled up right there. Let's say it one more time. Let's get the rocks out of the way. Are you ready? I'm not here to make a living. I'm here to make an impact. I felt a little moisture on that. Hallelujah. Just a little. Glory to God. The preoccupied mind. Fourth thing I want to show you is this. If we're going to hear from the voice of God, we need to cooperate with what he says. We need to cooperate with what he says. You can never go to your next thing until you finish your now. You cannot go on to your next. You cannot go on from glory to glory and from level to level in God till you finish the level he puts you on in the first place. Luke chapter 8, verse 8 says, And other fell on good ground, and it sprang up, and it bare fruit in hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that hath ears, let him hear. He says it another place. It's in the book of Revelation. He's talking to every single church in the book of Revelation, and he says the exact same phrase. He that hath ears, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Why is he tying the thing together and putting it in the story of a seed? It's because God meant for fruit to come out of your life. And God meant for seasons to come out of your life. Meaning what? You go through the season of dormancy. Yes, there's an autumn season in every child of God's life where the leaves are falling off the trees. Winter is coming on. The weather seems to be getting cooler. Then the first snow falls. When it falls, the rest of the leaves come off of the tree and it seems like the tree dies and the sap begins to get in your spirit. By the way, if you're a Christian and you're going through a winter, don't sap up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't sap up. Amen. Just go through the dormant season of life. Why? Because springtime is right around the corner. Hallelujah. And there are some of you, you've been in a dormant season, but I prophesy to you right now in the name of Jesus, and I tell you springtime is just around the corner. Get through this dormant season because there's a new plowing, there's a new furrow, there's a new field, there's a new seed, and it will die, but it will spring up. Hallelujah. To wonderful life in your spirit if you're willing to cooperate with what God says, and it sprang up, bare fruit a hundredfold, and when he'd said these things, he cried, he that had ears, let him hear. Verse 15 is the explanation. He says, but that that was on the good ground are they which in honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep. Man, shucks. That's where it hurts right there, Daddy. That's where it'll hurt your spirit. In honest and in good heart, having heard the word, keep it. They do it. Then they bring forth fruit with patience, meaning that what word you got now, if you're not living by it now, why do you need any new word if you're not living by the word you got right now? Do what he's already told you to do now. Then he'll give you another word for the next season. Do the word that he spoke to your spirit now. Pastor, what's the word spoke to your spirit for this church? The word Noah. Is that all he said, Pastor? Yeah, that's all he said. He said, Noah. What's that mean, Pastor? It means I'm going to have a flock of all different kinds. I got some giraffes and monkeys and hippos. and Glory to God, I got cows in here. I got sheep. I got all kinds in here. But I thank God for everyone God gave me. Hallelujah. What are you doing, Pastor? I'm building an ark. I'm building an ark because a storm's coming. And I don't really care what type of animal you are. Just get in the ark and set still. Hallelujah. Because we're going to get through this storm. And when we get through this storm, God's bringing us out on the other side. And that's all I know to tell you. How many of you are with me? How many of you are going to stay in the ark? How many of you receive what God said to my spirit? That's what he said. That's all I know is I'm a Noah. 
I'm not a Moses. I'm not an Abraham. I'd love to carry you over into Jordan, but I don't know. I just know a storm's coming, and we got to build an ark, and y'all got to get in. And if you don't want in, you're going to die out there in the storm, so you better stay in the ark. That's all I know to tell you. That's all I know to tell you. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so he says here, he says, honest and good heart, having heard the word, they keep it. They bring forth fruit with patience. And James chapter 1, verse 22 ties it together. And he says simply this, be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own self. Pastor, how, how is God going to continue to speak to me? Do the word he told you now. And then he'll speak to you another word, and you do that with obedience, and he'll speak to you another word. And if you do that with obedience, he'll speak to you another word. And if you become disobedient, he'll quit talking. He'll quit talking. Then you've got to either harden up and reject his word, or you've got to let God's rain come and moisture come, and you've got to get plowed again, and you've got to move the rocks out of the way again, and you've got to pull the thorns out of your preoccupied mind and shallow soil and say, God, I'm ready to receive it. But that takes deep repentance. It takes a heart after God to say, God, I really want you to speak to me. I really want you to say things to my heart and to my spirit. Here's what the good soul is. The good soul is a willing mind. It's a willing mind. It's a willing mind. And here's what I say. Be willing in advance. Be willing in advance. Meaning what, Pastor? Keep plowing your mind. Keep plowing your mind. When you see a rock in the way that keeps you from receiving the Word of God, get under the conviction of the Holy Spirit yourself and go dig that rock out. When you see a thorn coming up around your spirit, choking out the Word of God in your spirit, don't wait for God to pull that thing out. You pull it out in Jesus' name. You pull it out. If it distracts you, if it keeps you from receiving from the voice of God in your life, you get the sword of God's word out and you dig that weed and that rock out in Jesus' name and you prepare the soul where you can hear from God this morning. I believe there are people in this room this morning, you don't need me to lay hands on you. I believe there are people that are in this room this morning, you don't need another prophecy, you don't need another preacher to lay hands on you. You need a word from God for yourself. I believe that with all my heart. I believe there are people that are in this room this morning, this week, you're facing trials, you're facing temptations of life, you're, you're facing struggles, you're facing things in life that you need clarity on and you need to hear God for yourself. You need to hear God for yourself. I want the worship band to come back to the platform. I want every head bowed and every eye closed. I want you to stand very reverently in the house of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Brother Glenn, I want you to go to the platform and just begin to sing, Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Let me ask you something in this room this morning. You say, Pastor, when you were talking about the hardened path, when you were talking about a path that is crusted over and hard, it seems like it can't receive from the Word this morning. Pastor, something began to kind of crack in my heart today. Pastor, I realize that I'm that hardened path. I realize that I need to receive from the Word. If that's you, would you lift your hand and just place it back down this morning? Pastor, I have a hard place in my heart. There's several people who are being honest with God. Some of them are Christians that have been Christians for years. I understand there are times when you've been Christians for years, years and years and years. Even as a Christian, the soul can become hard around your heart. Three people answered that. How many of you would say, Pastor? The seed of God's Word's been choked out lately by rocks and by thorns. And I really haven't been able to receive and get any depth of the Word of God in my spirit because I'm just so occupied with the cares of this life. If that's you, would you lift your hand and just be honest? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. How many of you in this room would say, Pastor, he told me to do something months ago, years ago, weeks ago. And I still haven't done it. But this morning, I want to make a new commitment to do what he told me to do. If that's you, would you lift your hand this morning? 
I need to do the things he's already told me to do. Last thing. How many of you in this room would say, Pastor, I'm facing some situations, sickness, health, family-related, financial, whatever it is, I'm facing some situations of life right now. And, Pastor, I need a word from the Lord. I need a word from the Lord in my life, my family, my business, my home. I need a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. If that's you, if you answered any one of those altar calls this morning, I want you to come to this altar this morning as we begin to sing. And I want you to come and I want you to join us around this altar. And I just want you to begin to get into the presence of God. And I want you to say, Father, open my heart. Cultivate my mind that I can receive from your word again. Would you come right now? I want to see you. Would you begin to come? I want to see you. Open the eyes, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Lord, I want to see you. Say it again. Open the eyes, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. 